online family, my name is Mariah and I'm the children's pastor here at a church called home. And I just wanna say thank you for joining us. We have a great service planned for you today. We truly believe God is going to speak to your heart wherever you're watching from. We're going to step into the worship part of the service just for a moment, and then we're gonna jump right into the message. Thank you again for joining us and welcome home. How many of you are thankful for the cross today? I know I am. The cross has the final word. The cross has the final word. Sorrow may come in the darkest night, but the cross has the final word. Come on, lift it up again, church. The cross has the final word. The cross has the final word. Evil may put up his strongest fight, but the cross has the final word. Final word. We thank you, Lord. church lift this up today there's nothing stronger nothing higher nothing greater than the name of jesus all the honor all the power all the glory to the name of jesus there's nothing stronger Yes. 
Savior has come with the morning light. The cross has the final word. Come on, church. Lift up a shout of praise today. We thank you, Lord. We praise your name. Wow, I am so grateful for our worship team and our production team. They always do a fantastic job. I wanted to add one more thing before we go to the message. We love hearing from you here at a church called home. We try to make it super easy to connect with us. If you text the words, welcome home to 94,000, you can share a testimony, send in a prayer request, see our upcoming events, you name it. It's available by texting welcome home to 94,000. If you are watching and you are in our area, we realize that before you visit in person, first you may visit online. We love our online services, but trust me, it's better in person. We've got a great message for you today. Go ahead and grab your Bible as we jump into God's Word. Like we do every week, a big shout out to everybody watching online. Come on. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. So grateful that you chose to stop by and watch online. Thank you for being a part of our online family. We are in a series called Hope in the Darkness. Hope in the Dark. And in this series, we are talking about the obvious. We're talking about finding hope in life's dark times. We all have that one thing in common that all of us have been through a dark season. If you've never been through a dark season, well, you just haven't lived long enough. You live long enough and you go through some dark times. The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. Jesus even said in this life you, you might have, it's possible you will have. No, He said you are going to have trouble. Thank God He went on to say, but fear not, I have overcome the world. Come on, somebody. Thank God He's an overcomer because He's an overcomer. We can be an overcomer, but we all go through dark times. Now, if you've been a part of a church called home for any length of time, then you can tell any story that I've ever told about a dark season in the Creech family's story. But in case you're new, let me just, let me just catch you up on a few of the highlights of our family's time together. My wife, Melissa, who was just with me on stage during that dedication, when she was in high school, she was diagnosed with ulcerated colitis. When she was graduating from nursing school, her doctor told her she would be dead in six weeks. She'd never be a nurse, never get married, never have kids. But the devil's a liar and our God is good. Amen. Uh, amen. It was a dark season. We got married and she had on our honeymoon a revisit from colitis that almost killed her. We didn't spend our honeymoon doing what you would hope to be doing on your honeymoon. We spent our honeymoon in three hospitals in one specialty clinic. That was our honeymoon. Uh, not long after that, uh, I went into business for myself. And I would like to say that within 12 months, I was leading a Fortune 500 company. But I would be lying if I said that. I didn't make it a year in business. And we suffered a terrible business failure. I suffered a terrible business failure. We had bought an old home. It was our first home. We bought it in Alabama. We were excited about having this new home and we dreamed of fixing this home up. It was a fixer-upper and we were going to fix it up and one day flip it and make all kinds of money. I mean, we were young and full of vision and full of excitement. We had went through several dark seasons right out of the gate, but we still had hope. We bought that old home and one day I decided that that old cast iron tub that we had it needed to be cleaned out, and so Melissa was, was off. She was taking a nap on a weekend, and, and I went to clean it, and I used Clorox, and that wouldn't work, and then I used 409, and that wouldn't work, and then I used ammonia, and that wouldn't work, and soft scrub, and that wouldn't work, and I had this brilliant idea. I would mix about a dozen chemicals, and to, yeah, you're smarter than I was. <laughs> So I mixed a bunch of chemicals together and got into that cast iron tub. And let me just say it wasn't long after that, Melissa woke up hearing me and uh, I had collapsed in the bathroom floor and chemical poisoning. And she got me to the hospital in time for them to open my airways up and, and save me. And it was about two weeks after that, living in Alabama, fire ants are now in Tennessee, but they weren't in Tennessee back then. We were in Alabama and... I got into some fire ants and got stung, and true story, two weeks after chemical poisoning and almost dying, I go back to ER, and 
Uh, I had had a, an allergic reaction to this uh, fire ant sting, and, and, it, and it almost killed me. And then fast forward, uh, we ended up selling that home. And let me just say this, we flipped the house, but we lost so much money on the home that we had to borrow money to sell it. Yeah, that's not how you want to flip a home. I actually went to the banker, the, the mortgage company that was holding the mortgage, and we had been carrying this mortgage for two years while we were living now in Atlanta, so having to manage those two payments, I went to our lender and I said, listen, how much could I borrow if I suffered a loss? And so I borrowed money. We borrowed money to sell a home, and we paid on a home for, for years after we sold it a home that we didn't own anymore. Uh, our son, about that time, was diagnosed with autism, and we were told that if he was fortunate and we were lucky, maybe one day he would be able to sit in a normal kindergarten classroom, but the devil is a liar, and God is good. And our son graduated with honors, graduated with honors from high school. He graduated... He graduated with his, an associate's degree from Pellissippi, Dean's List, all the time. Now he's finishing his degree in computer science at UT, and he's working at Home Depot, and brother is doing real, real good. My God is so, so, so. Come on, give it up for my boy and my God. But it was around that time that all that crazy stuff was going on that we were hosting a youth camp, and uh, I was taking some young guys hiking to this one bluff, this overlook, and I guess I had walked into a swarm of yellow jackets, and I got stung 16 times in the face, and, and, and I've almost died from chemical poisoning and a, and a fire ant sting, and now I get stung 16 times by the time I get back to camp. Man, I look deformed. And in my wife, this is a true story. I don't blame you if you don't believe this, but Melissa said, God's moving at youth camp, and devil, you're going to have to do better than that. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you what happened. You may not believe this, but the very next day, there was a thunderstorm that came through that camp, and I was in one of the buildings. I was on the front porch. It was, it was a covered porch, and there was a Coke machine, and I was leaning against the Coke machine. It had a metal edge, and I got struck by lightning, people. <laughs> I didn't take a direct hit. A lightning bolt came down and struck a tree in front of me and it charged that Coke machine. I was touching the metal edge. It threw me off the porch and into the yard. And when I got up, I said, Woman, quit talking to the devil. I don't need any help. I do remember, I do remember that we went through so many back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back challenges. It was about that same time I woke up. I had taken Chaz camping, and on a Saturday I woke up, and I was brushing my teeth, and I noticed all the toothpaste was rolling out of the right side of my mouth. And I, and I looked in the mirror, and I realized I had no control of the right side of my face. I thought I'd had a stroke. And I went to the hospital, and the doctor said, are you under stress? And I said, oh, how much time do you have right now? <laughs> Sit down, why don't you? And uh, he said, That's, it's called Bell's palsy. You've, been, you've, you've had a Bell's palsy attack. Your face may not ever, it was so bad, he said, you may not ever regain everything. He said, if you can ever whistle, you know, you, you know you're fully recovered. <laughs> I mean, my God is good. My God is good. But it was, it was about that season in that time all those things happened that one day I actually was talking to the Lord like I'm talking to you I got up one morning and I said Lord I don't I don't mean any offense but I just want to say when I get to heaven the first person I want to see it's not you and I love you and no offense but the first person I want to see when I get to heaven is my guardian angel because I'm gonna choke slam that son of a gun I'm gonna beat him I'm gonna beat him I'm going I'm to rip his wings off. I want, them, I want them hanging above my mantle in my mansion in heaven because he ain't helped me one bit. I want his wings. <laughs> well, we better turn to the Bible. Why don't you open up your Bible? <laughs> open up your Bible to the book of Habakkuk. That's a, a fun name to say, Habakkuk. Sounds like you're coughing up a, a hairball there. But 
Habakkuk is, is a minor prophet. He's in the, in the back of the Old Testament. If you were in my Bible, it would be page 1004. If you don't have your printed version of the Bible, it will be on the screen behind me. But let me tell you a little bit about Habakkuk. He is one of what we call the 12 minor prophets. Now, don't let that word minor fool you. Anytime you write something and God puts it in His Word, there's nothing minor about you. Uh, you're, you're quite a major at that point. We call them the minor prophets because the, the content of the books they wrote, they were very small in comparison to what we call the major prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah. One of the things that I love about the prophet Habakkuk is, is when you read the book that he wrote, he is very authentic, he is very sincere, and he is very raw and real when he talks to God. And it's his authenticity, his rawness, his realness that is a, it's attractive to me. Now let me give you the back story about the time and place in which he is living. Habakkuk lives in Judah. And Judah in this time is paralleling the United States because Judah has been called by God and Judah has been blessed by God, just like we have. But Judah had turned their back on the things of God, just like a lot of our leaders in the United States have done over the last few decades. And the church said, Amen. but the devil's not taken America in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? Amen. As long as there's people praying, there's always hope. Uh, there was massive, massive government corruption in Habakkuk's day. Uh, his country was full of violence. There seemed to be no justice anywhere in Judah. And the prophet is confused because it doesn't seem like God is doing anything about the situation in which he sees every day he turns on the news. So Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 2, 3, and 4, I want you to see what the prophet says when he's talking to the Lord about what he sees. He says, How long, Lord? Must I call for help and you don't listen? That's pretty raw right there. He's in a dark season. Or I cry out to you, violence! And you don't save. And why do you make me look at all this injustice? And why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me, and strife and conflict they abound. Therefore the law is paralyzed, and justice never prevails. Now think about this. The Bible says that all Scripture is inspired by the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit moved upon the people who wrote the content of Scripture, and God stamped it approved. And so in other words, the Holy Spirit is moving on this man as he pins down this prayer that he's struggling with, these questions he's wrestling with, and the Holy Spirit says, I want everybody in 2023 at a church called home, I want everybody in this area, I want everybody across the, the world, around the planet, I want you to know that you can struggle with big questions. The prophet's confused. And he's got some questions. And his, his confusion revolves around the fact that he believes God hears him when he prays. And he believes that God sees everything, but for some reason it doesn't seem like God is doing anything. Now how does, how does all this look for me and you? Let me give you a couple scenarios. Maybe, maybe you finish trade school or you finish college or you graduate high school and you're ready to go to that next step in life and you're praying about a job and you love Jesus and... You say, God help me, and you start applying for jobs. There's one that catches your eye, and you pray about it, and you fill out an application. You get called in for an interview, and before you go into that interview, you're in your car praying, Lord, if, if this is the job you have for me, then help me with the interview process. And God, I thank you beforehand for giving me the job. And you go kill it in the interview and you leave and you just know, man, you crushed it. And you get a call, they hire you. And man, you're just worshiping. You're just thanking God for this job. This, I, I'm an adult now. i am got this new chapter of life I'm enjoying. And three months later, you get called into the boss's office and they let you go. And then to add insult to injury, they put somebody who's not near as godly as you are in the very spot 
where you were. And now you're, you're saying, God, I don't understand this. What's going on? Maybe, maybe your scenario is you, you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, so you pray, God, I want a spouse, and I want to meet somebody, and you meet the perfect girl, the perfect guy, and you guys date, and you fall in love, and you pop the question, and God, she says yes, and you're like, yes, I know God put all this together, and man, you get married, and a few years later, you have a couple kids, and then she gets a diagnosis, and you pray, and you believe, but it doesn't turn out the way you prayed that it would turn out. And you're like, God, what gives? I'm talking about real stuff. The question that we've all asked and we've heard other people talk about is the question, can you question God? And so I'm going to answer the question. I'm going to answer it boldly too and with confidence. That the answer to that question is absolutely yes. And let me tell you how I come to that conclusion. Well, there are entire books of the Bible written by people who are questioning, who are hurting, who are believing, and they were confused. Books like Job, books like Lamentations, books like Ecclesiastes, books like Jeremiah. Matter of fact, if you read one of my favorites, the book of Psalms, that whole book... Is songs and prayers written by people who are saying, King David's one of them, God, I don't understand. David, he's, he's, he's almost like bipolar because one day he's like, God, I am so excited about everything you're doing. You're so faithful and yada, yada, yada. And next minute he's like, God, where are you? And why do you let this happen? And why do you let that happen? And, and then let me remind you that Jesus Himself on the cross bearing all the weight of all the sin that we've ever committed, Jesus turned and looked at the Father and said, Father, why have you in this moment forsaken me? The Bible is full of questions. As a matter of fact, if my research is right, there's 13,000 questions in the Bible. Somebody's asking a lot of questions. Now, I love the prophet's name, Habakkuk. It, it's a little tricky to say, right? But here's why I love the prophet's name. His name means this. His name means to embrace and to wrestle. Now, if you're a note taker, I want you to write this down. If you're not a note taker, write this down. It's okay to wrestle with God as long as you don't forget to embrace Him. Okay, let me say it this way. When you wrestle with God, because all of us have and will. There's no one in here who hasn't wrestled with God at some point in their life. But when you wrestle, don't wrestle with your arm extended. Wrestle with your arm wrapped around Him. Don't wrestle this way. Wrestle this way. Because if you wrestle this way, Jacob, a patriarch of our faith, wrestled this way with God. And when he wrestled with his arms around God, he left that wrestling match never the same. God said, from this point on, we can't call you Jacob anymore. You're going to be Israel because you've wrestled with God in this season and you prevailed. And the trajectory of his life from that point forward was forever changed. God blessed him. God blesses us in seasons of wrestling as long as we wrestle and embrace at the same time. The way, check this out, the way to true intimacy with God is not to live every day on the mountaintop. Thank God for the mountaintops. Thank God for those miracle moments in your life when you're praying for a miracle and God does it. But let me remind you, you, you can't have a miracle until you're in a situation that demands one. So the, the way to true intimacy with God is not to live every day on the mountaintop. The way to true intimacy with God is to get to know His faithfulness in the valley. Amen. In the dark times of life. Psalm 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You can only say that when you've met God's faithfulness in that valley. 
David had met God's faithfulness in that valley, so David could say that with confidence. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord, what, all the days of my life. Come on. Man, isn't that good? Now, here's what I love. I love not only does God allow us to see how the prophet was raw and real and he struggled and wrestled with these questions, but, but also love the fact that God replied. And do you know if you will hang on long enough, God will speak to you. And if you're in a dark season, here's what I encourage you to do. I'd encourage you to go find you a place to get along with Jesus and cry out until you've heard from Him. And then let me remind you that when Moses went up on a mountain, it wasn't until the seventh day that God spoke to him. So listen, if you've locked yourself up in a prayer closet and you said, God, speak to me, and you didn't hear anything, then go do it again. And then go do it again, and go do it again, and go do it again. And eventually He will speak to you. And he spoke to the prophet. Look at verse 5. In my Bible, there's a title above verse 5, and it's the Lord's answer. God, thank you for speaking to your people. And the Lord said, look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your day that you would not believe even if it were told you. Only my God can turn a setback into a comeback. And only your God can, can take what looks like a disappointment and make it a divine appointment. Man, if you'll be faithful to God and, and, and you'll just keep pressing in, you'll see God do what only God can do. Now I'm going to give you five things that we learned from Habakkuk's story. Number one, hurting doesn't mean that you're less of a Christian. Hurting means that you're human. We all hurt. It's okay to hurt. The second thing that we learn from Habakkuk's story is God is big enough to handle the questions that you have to ask. You know, there's a verse that we've probably all quoted or heard quoted. Cast all your cares on Him, for He cares for you. If you look at that word cast in its original Greek text, that word cast implies violently, hostili with hostility, with anger, with frustration. So in other words, God's shoulders are big enough to handle whatever you throw on Him. I, I don't know how many times in a tough season, a dark season in life, some real holy Christian will walk up and then they'll... When we were going through some of those tough seasons, I remember some of them church people walking up saying, Oh, bless you, child. You know what the Bible says. He won't put more on you than you can bear. You just want to knock their teeth down their throat. <laughs> shut up. Just shut up. He won't put more on you than you can bear. You know, I think one way to look at that is if you're in a season that you can't hardly bear, then unload it on him. Quit carrying it. Give it to Him. Every time I get into a season where I can feel like I'm about to start twitching, it's like, okay, I know, I know. I'm carrying something that I need to give to Him. I'm not going to say, well, the Lord put, we're not going to put on more than, than I can bear. No, no, no. I'm going to say, God, I can't bear this right now, so I'm going to give it to you. And your shoulders are big enough to carry it. Here's a third thing that we learned. We learned that God would rather you wrestle with Him than to walk away from Him. That's what we learn from Habakkuk. God says, bring all that to me. Bring it. Come on. Don't run from me. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. Here's the fourth thing that we learn. Let your, let your doubts drive you to Him. Habakkuk had all those questions that he was wrestling with, but instead of running from God, he had all those doubts push him to God. And here's the fifth thing that we learn from his story. If you will tough it out, you will see His plan come about. God's a faithful God. He's a faithful God. I want you to bow your head with me and we're going to pray. Hey, thank you for watching today. If you're watching and by chance 
you've never received Christ into your life. Or if you're watching and today you, you would admit, I'm away from God. I, I, need, I need Christ in my life. You know, the good news is He's only a whisper away. The Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. In other words, we just stop and we acknowledge the fact that we need His help, we need His grace, His mercy in our life. And we just confess that to Him. We say, God, I'm broken, I've sinned, I've messed up. I need You. And the Bible says this in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sin to Him, He is faithful. Oh, come on. He is faithful and He's just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if you're watching and today you want to make a new start, that's what we call it at a church called home. If you want to make a new start, will you just pray with me right now, right where you are? Just close your eyes and pray this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you in my life. I'm away from you. I'm broken without you. I I'm a mess without you. I've sinned. I'm asking you to forgive me. I'm asking you to come into my life. I receive your grace. I receive your mercy. I receive your love. Today I make a new start in Jesus' name. Come on, say, say amen. You know, everything, you may not have felt a, a lightning bolt go through your body or Maybe you didn't hear thunder, but everything, if you prayed that prayer from your heart, everything changed at that moment. Everything has been made new. That's what the Bible says. You know what I'd love to do? I'd love to send you a new step devotion. Uh, we, we have a devotion we call Making a New Start, and it's a great next step. It'll definitely answer some questions and help you in your journey as you move forward in Christ. Would you just text the words, Welcome Home to 94,000? And if you'll Take a moment and you'll fill out a digital connection card. We'll send you a New Step devotion. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you so much. God bless and welcome home.